Hello, hello everyone. Um, today I would like to share with you a reflection. A passage of the book, The Power of Positive Thinking by Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. It's talk, it talks about personality assets and the power of our, our attitude towards life. The blows of life, the accumulation of difficulties, the multiplication of problems tend to sap energy and leave you spent and discouraged. In a such a condition, the true status of your power is, is often obscured and the person yields to a discouragement that is not justified by the facts. It is vitally essential to reappraise your personality assets. When done in attitude of reasonableness, this evaluation will convince you that you are less defeated than you think you are. For example, a man, 52 years old, consulted me. He was in great despondency. He revealed utter despair. He said he was all through. He informed me that everything he had built up over his lifetime has been swept away. Everything, I asked. Everything, he repeated. He was through, he, he was through irritated, reiterated. I have nothing left at all. Everything is gone. There is no hope. And I'm too old to start all over again. I have lost my faith. Naturally, I felt sympathetic toward him, but it was evident that his chief trouble was the fact that dark shadows of openness had entered his mind and discolored his outlook, distorting it. Behind this twisted thinking, his true powers have retreated leaving him without force. So I said, suppose we, we take a piece of paper and write down the values you have left. There is no use, he sighed. Sigh. I haven't a single thing left. I thought I told you that. I said, let's just see anyway. Then I asked, is your wife still with you? Why, yes, of course, and she's wonderful. We have been married for 30 years. She would never leave me, no matter how bad things are. All right, let us put that down. Your wife is still with you, and she will never leave you, no matter what happens. How about your children? Got any children? Yes, he replied. I have three, and they are certainly wonderful. I have been touched by the way they they have come to me and, and said, Dad, we love you. We will stand by you. Well, then, I said, that is number two. Three children who love you and who will stand by you. Got any friends? I asked. Yes, he said, I really have some fine friends. I must admit they have been pretty decent. They have come around and said they would like to help me. But what can they do? They can't do anything. That is number three. You have some friends who would like to help you and who hold you in steam. How about your integrity? Have you done any, anything wrong? My integrity is all right, he replied. I have always tried to do the right thing and my conscience is clear. All right, I said, we will put that down as number four, integrity. How about your health? My health is all right, he answered. I have had very few sick days and I guess I'm pretty good in pretty good shape physically. So let's put down as number five. Good physical health. How about the United States? Do you think it's still doing business and is the land of opportunity? 
Yeah, yes, he said, is the only country in the world I would want to live. That is number six. You live in the United States, land of opportunity. And you are glad to be here. Then I asked, how about your religious faith? Do you believe in God and that God will help you? Yes, he said. I do not think I could have gotten through this at all if I hadn't some help from God. Now, I said, let's list the assets we have figured, figured out. First, a wonderful life, a wonderful wife married for 30 years. Two, the three devoted children who will stand by you. Three, friends who will help you and who hold you in steam. Four, integrity, nothing to be ashamed of. Fifth, good physical health. Six, live in the United States, the greatest country in the world. Seven, have religious faith. I shoved it across the table at him. Take a look at that. I guess you have quite a total of assets. I thought you told me everything has been swept away. He grinned ash ashamedly. I guess I didn't think of those things. I never thought of it that way. Perhaps things, uh, things aren't, are not so bad at, at that, he said pensively. Maybe I can start all over again if I can just get some confidence, if I can get the feel of some power within me. Well, he got it. And he did start all over again, but he did so only when he changed his viewpoint, his mental attitude. Faith swept away his thoughts and more than enough power to overcome all his difficulties emerged from within him, within him, within him. This incident illustrates a profound truth, which is expressed in a very important statement by, made by the famous psychiatrist, Dr. Carl Menninger. He said, attitudes are more important than facts. That is worth repeating until its truth grips you. Any fact facing us, however difficult, even seemingly Open, openness is not so important as our attitude toward that fact. How you think about a fact may defeat you before you ever do anything about it. You may permit a fact to overwhelm you mentally before you start to deal with it actually. On the other hand, a confident an optimist thought pattern can modify or overcome the fact altogether. So I hope this passage, this reflection, um, make you think and in somehow or somehow help you to start to start this new year with feeling more powerful more confident. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, a wonderful 2024. See you at the next reflection. Until then, stay safe. Bye.